Hello friends, do you think the amphibian man exists? We'll tell you who does exist, no matter how incredible it may seem. There is a tribe in the world called the Bajau. For a thousand years, the Bajau people have been sailing the seas and oceans. They're hunters known to dive to great depths without scuba gear and other equipment. This unique tribe lives in Indonesia, or rather in the waters off the coast of the Indonesian islands. They are a kind of sea nomads. They build houses right on the boats. They roam the seas in them, living off fishing and pearl hunting, which is why they always dive to fairly great depths. So of course, these sea nomads have learned to stay underwater for a long time. This tribe is unique not only because they spend most of their lives out in the sea or underwater. The most amazing thing is the evolutionary changes that happened to the bodies of the Bajau people over many generations. First of all, their eyes have learned to see clearly underwater. We all know that water and air have different refractive indices. Our vision is designed to perceive space in the conditions of air and everything gets distorted underwater. But it isn't so for the Bajau people. They see just fine in the water. Second of all, a number of genetic changes have occurred in their bodies which allow them to hold their breath for a very long time. How long can you hold your breath for? Two minutes? Three? Maybe four? Well, people of the Bajau tribe can spend 13 minutes underwater without surfacing. Third of all, all of the members of the tribe are known to have significantly enlarged spleens. They're one and a half times larger as compared to the same organ of ordinary people. Why do they need it? Enlarged spleens allow the Bajau people to dive up to 70 meters without any equipment. So how does the spleen help with diving? At great depths, people's heartbeat slows down, which means that important bodily organs begin to experience a lack of blood supply. But when the spleen contracts, it pushes the oxygenated red blood cells into the bloodstream. The larger the spleen, the longer all the other organs can feel fine at such depths. Over time, more and more Bajau people move to live on the land. However, there are communities in some areas that still hold on to their nomadic lifestyle. They live at sea with no drinking water and come ashore only to bury their dead. These people have a philosophical approach to life. They don't have much, but they are truly happy nonetheless. They don't know how old they are, and they don't care. Current events are what they see as the true meaning of their lives. They don't keep track of time and don't count the dates. These people have no idea what electricity is, living only by the daylight. The Bajau people are completely illiterate. They can't read or write, but simply have no need for these skills. They live and raise their children in small huts perched on stilts right on the water. These houses have no connection to the shore, so one can only get there by sailing. They are, however, connected with each other by bridges. Children begin to learn sailing and fishing at a very early age, at about five years old. And what can they do for fun, in their time free from fishing? There is virtually no free time, since fishing takes up all of the daylight hours. However, on days where there are no fish, the Bajau people have fun diving, competing to see who can dive deeper and stay underwater the longest. Despite the fact that the sea is part of their daily routine, children still enjoy simply splashing in the water and collecting seashells. Before setting up stilt huts, they need to find a suitable place. These sea nomads travel on unusual boats called Lepa Lepa. These boats have everything. A place to sleep, supplies of drinking water and food, kitchen utensils, kerosene lamps, and much more. They're built by hand. As for the main occupation of these sea nomads, they don't always fish in a humane and safe way. Most of the time, the Bajau people stun the fish. Another method of catching fish is to use potassium cyanide. This substance paralyzes the fish, which allows the fishermen to simply catch it with their bare hands. This live but paralyzed fish is considered to be much more expensive than one caught with dynamite. However, cyanide causes coral poisoning, which causes the destruction of entire reefs and the extinction of fish species that feed on these corals. It's very sad that due to poaching and an unconventional lifestyle, the Bajau tribe risks losing their unusual culture and traditions. 
The authorities and all kinds of environmental services insist that the Bajau people move completely to land, thus reducing their levels of interference in the marine world. The culture of these sea nomads is definitely dying out, but I'd like to believe that international organizations for the protection of nature and tribes won't only aim to protect and restore the natural resources, but also to preserve the rare culture of living on the water. Well, that's it for today. So, how long can you hold your breath for? And how deep can you dive? Let us know in the comments and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.